Closed captioning for The Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on The Casey Malone Show. Today, it's one of my most requested recipes, pistachio cranberry cookies. And I visit CR Brewing Company in Newcastle. But first, I join my buddy Fast Freddy on his podcast at Youngstown Studio. And with me this afternoon is my special guest for many, many years. She was the queen of rock radio in Youngstown. She rocked your midday. We couldn't get Lynn Davis down, so we brought Casey Malone instead. I was trying, but if you guys want Casey Malone, Casey, how are you? I am good. (laughs) So today I was a guest of Fast Freddy's in Youngstown studio. And it's just like radio, but it's a podcast so you can listen and you can watch and it's either or you can do both right depending on you know where you are at that time and if you can't make it while it's live it's archived so you can go back to it at your leisure and uh freddie invited me to be his guest today and it's really just like radio but it's it's a lot more relaxed. You know, there's no commercials, which is kind of nice. And it's just a more relaxing atmosphere. How do you like the podcast? Well, you know, Casey, actually, to, to begin, it took me a little while to get used to it. I'm still not used to the, the whole long form of a podcast because, you know, being on the air, you probably have to get everything you want to say in 30 seconds, maybe a minute if they really if, met you. And then with music. Right. So, you you know, you do your little thing and then you hit a couple of songs. Then you come back and you talk about whatever you want to talk about, maybe take a phone call. But with this... There's no commercials, no breaks. If you're on for two hours, you just got to keep it going and going and going. <laughs> and I, I think that's been one of my biggest um, transitions from, from being on the radio to the podcast, because sometimes I find myself maybe stuttering or stammering, or you have a pause, a long pregnant well, pause. Well, you know, it, does, but it, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's a long time. You right. realize that our, ex- our attention span is so different. When we started radio, you know, Fast Freddy and I were the original crew back um, in 88 when the Wolf signed on. And we were doing 60 second commercials back then. Right. Think about that. Yeah. You know, and a 60 second radio commercial. Now they're doing twos and threes and fives and tens. Or 15s. A 15 second commercial for some people nowadays is, more than is long. You give a five second commercial. Hey, we're here for Taylor Kia. Exactly. Rock on. You were um, one of the last to go. You yes. know, um, right. the veteran broadcasters of radio. We used to have the veteran women, but right. now it's veteran. You know, we had Chrissy and I was first. Yep. And then we all went down line. The corporate environment, are you are you glad to be away from it? You know, really, honestly, it, it, it really was confining. And you've been down that road. Now you go out there, you do what you want to do, you say what you want to say, you run your show the way that you want to run it. And I, I think that that's really kind of a breath of fresh air because you know it, it, it goes back to the old school where you know if, if we want to take this show out on the road somewhere and yeah. sit in a bar and, and just interview people that are sitting in the bar exactly. or whatever, you're not looking at your watch. Now, like on our show today, we had Basil on, a comedian, yes. the comedian Basil. Now, at the end with, with where, where we were at, they would say, okay, only interview him for a minute. Make it two minutes and get done. Well, you know what? We could talk to Basil for two hours, really. And it that's that's the biggest transformation that I've had to make is because now with the you know podcast taking off, there are people out there that listen to podcasts because they just want to hear somebody talk. Robert Plant was a smelly cat. (laughs) Robert Plant was a smelly cat. No, he's like one of them European guys, and he's just wearing a leather vest, and it's like, here I am. But you know what? He had so much. Joe Denye owns Youngstown Studios, and you can hear him on the Youngstown Computer Show Saturdays on WKBN, and you are all in with the podcast. All in. How did you develop i mean you have a lot of studios here and what is it about the podcast 
that well, really attracts you? Gen generational, uh, the next generation, they consume media way different. They don't own radios, they don't drive around listen to AM or FM. Um, they go fetch the stuff they like to listen to and they search for it. And when they come across somebody, they subscribe to it and content finds them. So they're just consuming it way different, so you have to package it uh, different. That doesn't work, you know, the old models don't work with today's and, and how people are. I know, I mean, that's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. And when did you get on the podcast train? So we, we started podcasting our computer show. And um, we, we got a lot of traction after it was distributed on like YouTube and Facebook Live and Periscope and all those other ways. And it, it, you know, it was intriguing because it, you know, radio, you get the listeners that are listening at the time. With podcasting, you can have people listen to one show for nine months if it's good stuff. And then so it gets so much more traction than that one instance. And how, okay, so through social media, you are saying I'm here, here's what we're talking about. And then you are sharing clips and things like that, like to entice them? Well, just, just like Freddie, like we'll put full two hours together, but we'll take little highlight reels out of it. And then the highlights get them to the full, you know, blown content. And then what are you looking for where it becomes profitable? So, you, cause you don't have really advertising, you know, you're not um, showing ratings. So what are these numbers that you're seeking where then you know that this is something that will attract a sponsorship or is that how? Sure, yeah, and, and it's audience development. So you, you're basically looking at groups of thousands of, of viewers. Mm -hmm. um, Freddie's content got us to like 100,000 viewers in the first month of, of doing it. And that's a pretty significant number that's coming right out of the Fred. gate. <laughs> And so they have a, a, a basic number where it's maybe 15 or $20 per thousand uh, for that audience. So the bigger you make your audience, the more uh, you know, advertising uh, on the bigger groups like YouTube and stuff like that will pay. And so I ran around the back of the building and I just grabbed a big rock and I threw it through Gary J's window. <laughs> I just threw it through his window and then I had to climb in. And your, your specialization is helping people with their computers. Yeah. Are you going to branch out and do something else? I don't know. We'll see. I'm really busy Come right on. now getting Freddie going here. So. <laughs> You're trying to keep yeah. the guy. That, that trying itself, to keep him in control. That, is, that in itself is a big job here, just getting me going. And <laughs> I guess they came. The, the cops coming are both like upside down in a ditch. <laughs> and they're just sitting there hanging upside down. From their the Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for over 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may face. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court, and remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. Family on Mayflower Wilm Insurance Group is your full service independent agency. Our family works with a variety of insurance companies so you have the best choices for your insurance needs. Let us find the right product at the right price. Personal lines, business, farm, commercial insurance, life insurance. Trust locally owned Mayflower Wilm. You focus on what's important. We'll take care of the details. Mayflower Wilm, close by with three locations to serve you. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old Road Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. The perfect gift, Stonebridge Grill and Tavern, the best food in the valley. For every $50 you spend on gift cards, you get a free $10 bonus card. Stonebridge Grill and Tavern, Route 224 in Boardman and their new location on Route 46 in Howland. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available. Given is living. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available at $13 an hour. Given is living. I am here with Rude the Dude from the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Whether you're partying holiday style, in person 
or at home, you've got everybody covered. Yes, we have them covered here. You know, we developed a really good catering menu, half pan, full pans, office parties. Uh, family parties, anything off-site that we can handle, but also to in-site. We still have our banquet room, which holds up to about 85 people for buffets, limited menus. Again, office parties, family parties, we can get you covered any way you like. And you know what's really great? Rest assured, Magic Tree Pub and Eatery really takes the sanitation and the social distancing guidelines seriously. So you can trust them. Oh yeah, so you know, we want to thank the community for the support over the last few months and the pandemic, and uh, we're looking forward to a new year here. It's going to be a great year. Go to their website or Facebook for the complete menu. Happy holidays. Today I'm going to share with you a borrowed recipe. My buddy Martin comes to visit and he brings me these cookies. They were delicious. They had the dried cranberries in it and pistachios, and they were just delicious. So I said, well, I need the recipe for these. He said, they're so easy. Let me get you the recipe. And then it winds up that he got them from a girlfriend of his, and then she got it from Gourmet Magazine. They are called Cranberry Pistachio Cookies. How easy is that? For this recipe, you'll need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarters cup unsalted butter softened, six tablespoons of granulated sugar, one half teaspoon of finely grated orange zest, one half cup of shelled pistachios, not the dyed red ones, one third cup of dried cranberries, one egg lightly beaten, and one quarter cup of decorative sugar, preferably coarse. Before we start mixing, I am just going to put the salt and the cinnamon, the dry ingredients together and mix these. Now I did sift my flour and now we will take the three quarters cup of softened unsalted butter and we'll put that in the bowl here of the mixer and we'll throw in the orange zest and the sugar. Remember, there's only six tablespoons of sugar. That's not very much for a cookie. So we'll just put this on medium and we are going to blend this until fluffy. It'll be about three or four minutes. All right, so the cookie batter is nice and fluffy. It smells so good with the orange zest and it's such a pretty color. And now, I'm going to put this on low and we will add one third of the dry ingredients. In different intervals. So we'll start with that and we'll just do this until it's combined. I just love my stand mixer. My mother-in-law gave me, she got a new one, gave me her old one, and I love it. I never had one before, and I just use it more than you can imagine. Now we'll add the rest of it. And we just mix this until it becomes all clumpy and together, because you don't want to overmix the cookie dough. And now we're going to add the pistachios. I chopped them up a little bit, not real fine, but spread them out a little bit. And then the dried cranberries. You can chop those up too, but those might not be as necessary. And all I'm gonna do is just put this on low and blend it up real good, about one minute. So I've gotten all of the dough and just work it a little bit with your hands if it's a little crumbly. And I've taken it out of the mixing bowl. And then what you're gonna do is just cut it in half. So separate, I'll put this one back in the bowl. So you want it to be about an inch, inch and a quarter round. And spread it out and try to work it, I'm not doing very good. Use the wax paper to help you roll it out a little bit. But now they want it to be a bar. 
not round. So now that you have it in the paper, you are gonna square it off. See? So they're like two bars of dough. We'll wrap it up and then I'll put it in some plastic wrap and I will put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. But of course, I made some last night and we'll get that out of there and we'll slice it. But you want these to be nice and cold. So what I'm gonna do first is use the egg wash and just brush all the sides of the bar, the bar, box, whatever you wanna call these. And just make sure there's enough to catch the sugar. Don't worry about the ends. And then you pour, I love the sugar, it's beautiful. It's coarse and it has like gold, it's called cupcake gems. But you could use any coarse sugar. What is it, the turbinado? A lot of people like to use that. Just roll the bars in the sugar. And they don't have to be super coated with this. And then what we're gonna do is slice them. Forget the ends, because they're a little funky. But about a quarter of an inch. That is about as thick as these cookies should be. And see, look how pretty they are. Do you see how nice with the pistachio and the cranberry? They're just beautiful. And then they have the little glitter of sugar. They don't spread, so you can put them on your cookie sheet. Just about a half an inch apart. I'll put them in the oven. Let's start at 12 minutes. And at six minutes, take them, turn them around, switch their place, so they're evenly baked, and then start checking again in another six. It should be about 12 minutes. You don't want these to over bake. See, you just want them brown on the edges. Aren't they a nice looking cookie? So tell me what you think. Mm. Oh, they're delicious. Not super sweet, mm -mm. not a lot of sugar, but boy, the pistachios and the cranberries. You know, I think these would also be good with dried cherries. Oh yeah. You know? There's Travis City makes. Yes. No. Uh, like the Michigan ones. Mm -hmm. Just go to my website for the pistachio cranberry cookies. You are going to love them. Cheers. Drove, yeah. And a nice cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Always works well. Mm. CaseyMaloneShow.com. Enjoy. We'll be right back with more local flavor. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. Here at Creekside Fitness and Health Center, we are focused on you. From cardio and strength equipment to classes and personal training. Your all-inclusive membership gives you access to a full-size basketball court, pool, hot tub, sauna, and steam room. And over 60 classes per week are all included free with your membership. Membership and personal training specials are happening now. So come experience life on the fit side at Creekside, your neighborhood gym. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. My basement was dreadful. Cracked concrete, chipped tiles, it was my dumping ground. Carpet, vinyl, wood don't last. 
Now I have Pebble Stone, the best basement floor covering, made with natural stone and the strongest man-made binder. Pebble Stone evened out my floor. Easy to clean, resists moisture, and withstands flooding. You will love your basement. Call today and receive 65% off and have Pebble Stone installed by the holidays. Selling engagement rings never gets old. It's love. It's a huge on-taking because they're going to wear that ring probably forever, but if they're not going to wear it forever, they're going to pass it down to somebody. Our rings will hold a lifetime, and we want to make sure it does. We stand by every single thing that we sell. I believe I can find the perfect ring. I really try to get them exactly what she would want. And to just be a little part of that is really, it warms your heart inside. Get real, get Kamara. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Join Mahoning Valley Historical Society for our 2020 MVHS holiday season. Safely celebrate online at MahoningHistory.org and on Facebook and YouTube. From nostalgic videos to holiday artifacts to festive crafts, enjoy Mahoning Valley history on any of your devices. Get all the details at MahoningHistory.org. Well, today we're over here in Newcastle at the CR Brewing Company, which is a part of the Crane Room, and this is a family operation. We've got Greg Measle, who is one of the owners and then an assistant brewer, his brother Jeff, brother-in-law Brian McDowell. I mean, you guys really have a serious operation here. Absolutely, it's definitely a family business. Brian's our head brewer and pretty much takes care of the recipes and, and runs the brewing operation. And that's where we're located right now and is on the floor of our brewery. Why did you think the Crane Room needed to add a brewing company in addition to, like, that's a great restaurant. And you're, he's also the GM there. So why did you start this brewing uh, adventure? Sure. Well, Brian's been home brewing ever since my brother Jeff had bought him a, a homebrew kit. And he was just making such good beers. And we had such success at the restaurant with the craft beer market and expanding yes. our taps that it was just a natural progression. So tell me more. Now, what was the first beer you brewed? The first beer we did two, the first beers we brewed were our Kolsch. And I love a cold. It's very popular. It's our most popular. And in the summertime, here, yes. I mean, there is so sessionable. Yes. Like that term? Yes, like it's, it's very good. Yes, Getting people can drink a lot, of the, a lot of the cold. 5% ABV, pretty yes, light. Right, right around there, yes. Then we did a double IPA, which is not so sessionable, but yes. it was also a very, <laughs> a very good one to start with. Um, and then the Kolsch, the first brew, we also wanted to do some stuff in bourbon barrels. So we actually aged the Kolsch in a bourbon barrel, which is not normally done. But that came out a very good product and one of our more popular ones as well that we have. So, so this was the system he was trained on when he took the, the brewery class at UC Davis, which actually has a bachelor's program. Yeah. So my sister bought him some, some classes and he, so he started using this as his home brewing system. This is, this is almost like a really good system to, to get your recipe done because it's, it's, it's identically the same thing as our system in its process. It's just, you got to keep it, you can burn stuff, you know, there's direct flame there. We have steam jackets on ours so that we're not likely to burn. So we have a, we have a boiler. So do you use this to maybe experiment? Yes, you, yes. With, we with make small stuff. batches, yes. You'll see them on our tap system up there too. We've got a yellow one. Oh, we got these this are... bigger one too. Oh my gosh. That's cool, man. That is very, it's really keeping with your theme. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so then you also have the crane room, so this would be called like the loft bar. We call this the loft, yes. And then all the great food that's at the crane room is also available here. Yes. And then if we have non-beer drinkers. We have a full, uh, full, we have full, full liquor bar, um, wine, and pretty much whatever people want, yes. So if people, I mean, I, I didn't realize that this was all a new build to what was existing. Correct. The, the How did... 2017, when the brewery was being, you know, looking to be added on, we had some different options beforehand, but then we decided to basically go big with it, and we added about 20,000 square feet, which is, <laughs> which, which, which is where you are, and we used some other, we had a building that we had uh, 
wanted to save some of the pieces of it and had demolished downtown Newcastle as an Elks Club that was a hundred year old building so we mm. kept the steel trusses for that and the uh, limestone pillars that are the main entrance in our back of the building now. That is our coals. And a lot of people don't do coals, which I think these are really It's very nice light and refreshing. It's our, it's our most popular, I would say, beer here, I would say for sure. And then obviously we have some other additions we're going to go next will be the uh, the blood orange colch mm. after that. So This is really refreshing. Thank you. That is very good. What are you having? I, I have the enjoying? blood orange colch too. So. And that's so what that, I'm having so we'll, now. So if you want a toast, yes, yeah, so that's where we're heading next. So yes. Cheers. To the blood orange colch. To an orange colch. Oh, wow. But it's not too orangey. No, just a little blood orange puree. It's just got a nice, it's very good. Now, what is this one? This one came about from our, our first batch that we brewed, which was the Kolsch, and we had some bourbon barrels that we wanted to use, because I, I like bourbon, saw, and we yes. just saw on the back, and ultimately this is the bourbon barrel aged Kolsch. So it, it's gonna it. be, it's gonna pick up some alcohol, so it's gonna be about 9% compared to the, the regular 5.2 for the Kolsch. You know what this is? You should call this a boiler maker. Really good, isn't it? Remember the boiler yes. makers? Yes. When those guys would want the shot in a beer, sometimes they drop it right in. That's a good idea. This we have to, we have to is, add some names to our beer, so that's, yes. that's a good idea, definitely. Call it Casey's Boiler Maker. Boiler Maker Cold. This is delicious. And the next one we have is the stout, so we got a dark one here for you. Yes. We've done I some do varieties like of these as well, yes. Yeah. So this, you're gonna pick up some coffee notes with this. Mm hmm. It smells good. It smells, you can smell the, the coffee. Oh, this is smooth. This is really good. It's good and it's cold. So in the summer, now do some people like to have this at room temperature? I don't get a lot of you people know, that like request Guinness that. Yes, that. I don't get a lot of people requesting room temperature. Hey, thank you. Let me see which one should I cheer with. You uh, do the blood one or you do the bourbon barrel. Let's, I'll do see, this let's one with stop. That. All right. Cheers. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.